Welcome to Mining Now. We are live at MIMO 2019 in Kamloops, BC. The show is brought to you by CIM and Crownsman Partners. We're very excited to be here. Mining, mining experts, leaders, innovatives, that's what we bring to you on Mining Now. And today we have David, but wait, I, I'm not going to butcher his name. So we have David. Butgereit. <laughs> Butgereit. Butgereit. We're going to be here a while if I keep trying to do, say your name properly. So um, you're the CEO of X Graphic. And um, you're, you're, when you're on the show today, we're going to be discussing real-time mining. So just, just off the bat, when we say the term real-time mining, where is that coming from? What does it mean? Yeah, real-time mining uh, is the name of an R&D project mm -hmm. that has been funded by the European Commission. And uh, the main goal of the project was to use online sensor data from underground, positioning data from underground, machinery data, to do an on-the-fly update of the mining process. So basically, we are talking about industry or mining 4.0. Okay. Everybody's talking about it, but mostly it's not really implemented. And the main goal of this project was to do some, uh, implement some application that really uh, uses online data to optimize the mining process. Okay. So mining 4.0, can you give us a little, I mean, a lot of people watching are going to be familiar with it, but what, what, is, what is mining 4.0? Is that a global thing or is that the Euro part of the European as well? I think it is, should be a global thing, yes. the expression. I mean, everybody's talking about data. Right. 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it was hard to get the data. Mm -hmm. uh, even in uh, general industry branches, but in mining as well, it's well, especially in mining, it's very hard to get information from underground to the surface, into the cockpit, into the control rooms. And uh, nowadays we have new technologies for mm -hmm. communication. All the machinery has different kind of sensors. Everything produces data. And this should be the, the basis for the decisions that have to be taken to optimize the mining process and you to analyze the things that really are going on underground. You, and you mentioned so you've mentioned underground uh, already a couple times. Um, I want to I want to circle back to the underground, but I wanted to talk a little bit about mining uh, geologically complex ore bodies. Um, it's sort of a mouthful for me to say. And what is that? What sort of what's the main challenge with these complex ore bodies? And sort of what's the solution, which you already alluded to? But what what is the the challenge, the solution to those? To the ore body. I mean, mining, mining in general is very complex. Of right. course, you are underground. Uh, it's hard to go there. And nowadays, we have to deal with more and more complex geometries of the ore body. They are very deep. Mm -hmm. uh, if we talk about selective mining stuff, we have very narrow veins. And it gets more and more complicated and expensive to get those materials. And uh, yeah, this is what the main focus of the project is. Because on the other side of the mining process, we have the customer that wants a good quality product mm -hmm. and a reliable feed of this product. So we really have to optimize our processes in the mining industry to be able to yeah, compete and uh, to deliver what the customer requires. And how do you, in a, in a, in a practical sense, I, I saw you, you had a presentation, you'll be doing it later or tomorrow at, at MIMO, yep. and there, there's a, the underground mining cycle. How do you turn that into operational data or, or intelligence, I guess. Um, how, do you, how do you formulate that out, in a, in, I guess, in a visual way and in, in processing? Yeah, um, when we started the project, we tried to sketch up the mining process. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the whole mining process, but especially the handling of the material of the ore body and the, relating, uh, the resulting models, yeah. because they use geology models and when they do the mining, I, I mean, I'm not a miner for myself, I'm a computer scientist, but we uh, are working for the mining industry for mm -hmm. quite a while and we do software solutions for the mining industry. So I know a little bit about it, but not all the details. Learning as you go. Yes. Um, and what they do, they are optimizing the mining process based on the optimized or updated geology models. And this sometimes takes a while to do this update because you do some planning, you do the mining and after you get some material of the mine you try to analyze it and then you optimize the process and the goal of real-time mining was to make this a little bit quicker mm -hmm. to really close this loop 
um, based on online data to update the models earlier to be in a situation to yeah, optimize the mining process very early, in an early stage. Yeah, so you talked a little bit about the you know, closing that loop in resource management and, and to go back to, to something like the underground mining cycle. And I saw on your slide, there's, this, there's sort of this graph um, formulating all this operational intelligence. And can you just talk a little bit more about that and, and what we're looking at, the audience is seeing it on the screen? Like, what are we seeing when we're, we're going into this kind of graph? Sure. Um, nowadays, we, we usually don't have the problem to get some information or data from There's underground. There's data anywhere. There's data yeah. anywhere. Every machinery, mm -hmm. every sensor produces data. And uh, it's more the problem to manage all this data. Yeah. And uh, what's quite important is to distinguish between data and information. So mm -hmm. we have lots of data, but it's... The interesting part is to get the right information out of this data. And when we started the project, um, because we have so many partners as well, we had to figure out who is responsible for which parts in the project. And we set up this diagram that you mentioned to just uh, structure the process of the handling of the ore body. Right. And uh, yeah, it just deals all the different stages from the basic ore model, from the block model that we have, uh, over the blasting process, or the drilling, the blasting, the crushing, the transportation, and finally the sorting of the material. And all these different steps in this mining process, uh, we just split them up, mm -hmm. and uh, then we can just uh, derive the different actions that have to be taken, and we see which data formats occur, and where are the interfaces between the different uh, yeah, steps in the process, and um, if the... Um, figure will be shown later on uh, it's uh, it's visual that um, we color code the, the right. different parts so yeah. so we could directly derive the responsibilities of the different partners based on this diagram so this was basically our starting point for the whole project oh, because okay. the first work package was of course to get any document with the requirements where do we want to go with the project and who has to be uh, in which responsibility? Oh, I see. And it's, so it really is about turning data into intelligence and categorizing it properly so that partners, information, everything is in, in a way that everybody can follow. Everyone's on the same page to it, then do their task within that data set. Exactly. Right. I mean, the, this was an R&D project. Right. And, uh, a well-known problem in R&D project is um, the, it is a consortium of different partners. Yes. Uh, but um, every partner, of course, wants to promote his thing right. and is a little bit focused on his development right. and uh, we try to manage to get rid of this problem in a very early stage to get everybody in the same boat right. and based on that diagram it was possible because everybody sees who is responsible for which parts in the project. Yeah, the And that's the thing about an R&D project, it, it is such a, uh, it is such a, there's so many partners that are required to produce uh, you know, turn data into intelligence. Anybody watching this show, remote, it, it, not even in just mining, in any industry is going to understand the challenge of that. And I looked, I saw, I think, 13 partners as part of this project, um, X Graphic being one of them. Uh, can you just sort of outline, like, who are some of these partners uh, that, are, that are getting involved with this? Yeah, basically there are um, a few universities, mm -hmm. um, German universities, uh, one university um, from Portugal, and uh, then we have software companies like WIA and uh, machinery uh, companies or sensor companies. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically this is a, a very interesting mix of different yeah. partners uh, to be able to uh, yeah, solve the, the issues in this, uh, in this project. I think it's so important to, to clarify this because... Um, you know, in an industry like this, and mining hasn't, you know, mining has to work together to, to produce at a high level. So who puts this together? You said it was funded by the European, European Commission. European exactly. Commission. Um, who puts, who chooses these companies, puts them together and, and, and actually formulates? I mean, 13 companies on an R&D project, is a, that's a lot of voices, a lot of, I'm sure, a lot of knowledge, a lot of talent trying to work through. Who puts all that together? Yeah, basically, this was our part in the project. Oh, we had a very central work package. Uh, we had eight uh, work packages, and uh, three of them were 
what we call the mining machine. Mm. That is everything that's going underground. I mean, we had the guys who did the positioning underground. We had the material characterization, the sensors from the machinery. And on the other side um, was what's going on with the data later on yeah. to up optimize the model, to update the model and to bring it back to really close the loop, what we discussed before. Mm -hmm. And our part um, was just in the center of these two sides, the mining machine on, and the optimization process. So it was our part to gather all the information from the different partners, to integrate it into a centralized database, um, do the implementation of that, and finally do the implementation of the cockpit software for the visualization. Yeah, I want to actually go through, because there's uh, the development that X-Graphic has done. Um, could, you, could you actually talk about that a little bit? I mean, you've touched on it in pieces through the interview. Um, but it's pretty amazing stuff. So what is the actual development um, from X-Graphic? Um, X-Graphic has a long history in mining. Uh, we have been founded uh, nearly 25, uh, more than 25 years ago in 93. Oh, I, I didn't actually realize it was that old. So we are, we yeah. are spinner from a mining institute from University Aachen. Right. It's, it's a very big university in Germany, a very technical university, and one of the three main mining universities. So we have a long experience in the development of uh, applications for the mining industry, right. planning tools, uh, visualization tools, optimizing tools. And uh, within this project and another project that was running in parallel, um, we tried to implement our own framework mm -hmm. for data integration and visualization. So you're so building a framework from the ground up then? Yeah, it's totally from scratch and uh, our main goal was, I mean, there are lots of tools for visualization anyway, lots yeah. of companies that have different planning tools, uh, process monitoring, uh, maintenance, predictive maintenance stuff, but um, we are in a situation as a pure software company that we, we said we want to have our own basic library Mm -hmm. or libraries and a framework to be able to set up such applications um, from scratch in a very individual way for a customer. Because what, what we missed in the discussion is the, the main one of the main sub-goals in real-time mining was the focus on small-scale mines. Mm. Because in, in Europe we have lots of such mines. Um, in Germany we have mines with three to five people. Right. Uh, it's... Uh, very different to, to some mines uh, on the other places uh, in the world. There's some big ones over here in and Canada. And they, they, ca <laughs> they cannot afford such big solutions. Right. And with our framework, we are in a situation to customize oh. data integration, visualization, either in the web browser, browser uh, on the desktop computer, on a laptop, or even in virtual reality. Yeah. So we have our own framework that is completely independent of different, um, of external that's interesting. Libraries. It's interesting you mentioned about the small, the going down, um, because most things are trying to scale up, but you're trying to build it so that you can scale up or scale down if yes. needed, right? That's in sort of a reverse of what you hear from a lot yes. of software. And I want, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and what, what we have done in the project later on, um, we implemented a cockpit, which is basically not our contribution. Right, the co this is the real-time mining cockpit software. Exactly. Yeah. This, is, this is what has been misunderstood mm. even in our consortium. Um, as I said, it's always a problem of communication if you have so many partners. So our main goal was not the implementation of this cockpit, but we implemented a framework and the cockpit is some kind of instance of what we can do with our framework. I see. Can you talk a little bit more about the cockpit software, though? Yeah, yeah the cockpit software is... Um, Either we have a graphical user interface for a desktop computer or you can run it in a web browser if you need some decentral data access. And it consists of lots of different data models that you can integrate, uh, starting with the mine layout plan. From our point of view, everything starts with the mine layout plan right. because we use it as navigation mm -hmm. tool in the mine. If you, The first screen is always the mine layout plan and you can directly see everything is green mine is running fine or you see some some orange or red or yellow things popping up and just by clicking on the 3d model you can go into more detail switch to different screens load other models either um, surface models grade control models whatever occurs in the project is that um i might be wrong here but there's this the in one of the slides i saw this it's uh, called blast e epoch epoch, epoch view? view yes yeah what is that 
Yeah, the main application in one of our um, test fields or mm -hmm. test environments, uh, it was uh, the Reiche Zeche in Germany. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. It's an old ore mine and uh, it's used as R&D mine or lab, you can say. Right, okay, uh, yeah. And as a visitor mine. And uh, yeah, there are lots of companies that have different labs underground. It must mm -hmm. not be mining, but it's uh, very easy to go there. You don't have any specific uh, requirements it's very easy to go underground take your equipment with you and do some real testing under real mining environments yes. without having an operational mine that uh, restricts you in your right. possibilities yeah okay and uh, f in this mine we we did some for the test of the uh, results of the project or mm -hmm. for the for the uh, evaluation that's this one with the, the red the red exactly all, yeah okay we, we did uh, three blastings mm. in this mine over the duration of I think one and a half year so it took a while they did the, the drilling the blasting then analysis of the data and then we go on and this view just shows uh, the different data sets that result from this process and you have the possibility to overlay different data sets like the mine geometry of the tunnel mm -hmm. the block models and uh, the drill data everything you can bring into one homogeneous user interface. Bring it into that loop that we're yes. talking about, closing that loop. And, and yes. basically this is a full um, 3D application and you can just use it to analyze the data and to, to switch in or switch out or fade in, fade out different data sets to be able to analyze it in a very intuitive way. Right. I wanted to go into the other thing and that's the virtual reality, which is um, I've been to events in that and there are, you know, some of these major companies are doing virtual reality tours of their entire plants. It's pretty amazing. How is this, uh, is this type of virtual, virtual reality within the mining industry and on the, the, the grounds of the mining uh, operations, uh, how is that, what is the product and what is the implementation yeah. of it, the use of it? Yeah. So, as I mentioned, our framework um, that we implemented during this project, um, has also interfaces for virtual environments. So if the customer needs some virtual or even augmented reality solutions, then we can do it within the same framework. So he can see his data either on his laptop or in a web browser or in a virtual environment. Right. So this was our main goal, that we are in a situation to just deliver all solutions or different solutions uh, depending on the requirements of the customer yeah. um, and for us it's very easy to set up either we go into the desktop application or we do some virtual reality stuff or a mixture and uh, we think that virtual reality is really interesting mm -hmm. um, and I try to promote it uh, in different on different conferences and uh, talks uh, in Germany and now I'm here yeah and uh, yeah we see great opportunities especially for the mining because there's lots of data that could be analyzed in a very intuitive way because if you have experienced virtual reality um, it's just so intuitive to 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 use it and uh, to analyze the data because, I mean, we are talking about complex 3D models right? and we are trying to analyze it and work with it on a 2D screen with 2D input devices. And yeah. this is, I think, a limitation that we have come over with our framework and, yeah, we just use the virtual cockpit, as we say, yeah. um, to put every data we have in yeah. and the user can decide on his own, what to do with the data. How they turn it into information, Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. You, you can just load the different models and interact with those models. You can combine the models. Uh, you can access different kinds of information. We have uh, easy to configure menus, for example, mm -hmm. um, just to load some data, to um, set a virtual cockpit up, or set up a virtual cockpit um, in the virtual environment. And uh, yeah, that's what we realized for the for this project. I want to talk about, uh, and uh, you've talked a little bit about it, and I, I just want to kind of quickly touch on them in mm -hmm. a you know in a visual way. So you have the immersive data exploration, you have interactive menu controls. So that immersive data exploration is that that all ties into everything we've been talking about. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. I mean, the thing is, um, as I said, there are lots of tools, for example, for the use of virtual reality and lots of companies are using virtual reality mm -hmm. and they use 
external tools. Right. And um, because we did everything from scratch with our own libraries, um, we also had to implement um, mechan mechanisms, or how do you say that? Tools for the mechanisms, user. Tools, yeah. Mechanisms, tools for the user to be able to interact with the world. And this is how can we interact with the models? We use, for example, um, such uh, hand sensors or gloves right. that you use to, to, to grab the models, to rotate it, to scale it. Oh, that's amazing. Um, you can configure your own menus or you can load all the screens that we have in the 2D application on the desktop. You can also load into the virtual reality environment um, to set up your own virtual cockpit software. Yeah, and that's that interactive menu control that being able to, that, that somebody, once you've brought it in, now they can control how they use it, what they're using, the data points that they're pulling, exactly. how they're being shared out with their teams, everything like that, it comes in and then they can basically distribute it out. Is that right? That is right. And the problem is, um, I mean, we are, we are the software guys. Right. And uh, we have this, this framework application and we need the input from the operators, from, from the, operators, the mining yes. companies, what they really, and we are in this process right now, what they really need. And I'm right. talking to a few uh, companies in Germany just uh, the last two weeks. Um, and things are going on right now. And we will try to figure out what their specific requirements are. And then we can just easily adopt this and uh, modify our application. And then they can use it um, and yeah, use it for their own applications. Yeah. But we cannot, we cannot uh, implement an application that is, let's say... Uh, ready to go and it suits all the different companies no it they, has to be the, built for them it has to be built for them and that's why the big companies do it on their own so right. mostly they do some virtual reality uh inside their own company right so building it from customized now i wanted to i was going to ask you about sort of what's the summary of what x graphic has done i think we've covered a lot of ground so i'm gonna i'm gonna switch to a different uh question in being because you said your background isn't mining, it's it's uh, software, right? Yes. And so how does that, when you come into a project like this, what you think is going to happen, what does happen, and what could happen are all three very different things sometimes. Mm -hmm. How has that been? What, what did you expect coming in to doing a project like a major R&D project like this? And what's the result? How is it different from what you thought it was going to be? Uh, to be honest, in this project, uh, we had lots of problems, uh, lots of struggling right. <laughs> within the partners. Uh, it's obvious because it's a re so really... So many voices. So many voices, a huge consortium spread over all uh, over Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, for our development, we are quite happy with the result because we achieved everything we wanted mm -hmm. b before the project started. And uh, now, in combination with uh, another... German R&D project um, where we focus a little bit more on this VR stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have our framework developed that we now want to use for specific mining applications. Mm. And where uh, and, and the next part of that is where does it go? Uh, have those some a lot of those hurdles been sort of have you gone through them? Is there sort of the next set of challenges? What are they in the next let's say three to five years as you continue to develop and work with partners and? Yeah, the first uh, thing for us is to get partners in right. the mining industry. This is for us the main part. And right. I think if if we find those partners, and we, I think we are close by. To provide those data points and that, that exactly. unique experience I, of each mine. and right. I just got some, some, some information last week or two weeks ago. And now the things start to, to roll and uh, start to, I think, uh, begin. And uh, this is, I think, a uh, self-working process later on. But we... In first instance, need the contact to the operators and to the mining companies that really want to use such technologies. I think this is a, a big problem. Yeah. VR is very well known. Everybody wants to have it. But not but well no, understood. No, it's not well understood <laughs> yeah. and nobody wants to spend money for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it is not that, that expensive. The hardware is very cheap. And uh, quite interesting about virtual reality is uh, everybody thinks that is new technology. Basically, it is not. The first head-mounted display, I think, uh, by Ian Thuth uh, Sutherland is about 60 years old. Wow. But uh, now we have it in our pockets. I mean, yeah. just take out your smartphone. You have yeah. everything in. You have a gyroscope. You have a stereoscopic camera. And you are ready to go for an 
augmented reality application. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, technology just have developed so fast in the last years. Uh, and now the VR devices are, yeah. there are so many uh, of them and uh, they, they suit to the different applications. So uh, you just have to uh, define what your goal is in your company, what you want to do. And then you can just go to a store and buy virtual reality hardware and yeah. the rest will be hopefully done by our company. Yeah. The integration <laughs> of the data and finally the application development. Well, I'm sure you're going to have some mining, uh, some mining people watching this show. So I, I thanks for coming on. You're actually the first mm -hmm. guest on Mining Now. So thank you very, very much for coming on. And, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah. Uh, and I hope, yep. you, I hope <laughs> you go very well with this because it is very important for the mining industry. So I'm going to do a quick sign off onto this camera and... Uh, Thank you, everybody, for watching the first episode of Mining Now. Again, it's brought to you by CIM and in partnership with Crownsman Partners, which is where I'm from. Um, there's going to be a lot more episodes coming, so however you're watching it, subscribe, follow. Uh, you know, CIM has you know LinkedIn and Facebook, Crownsman as well. Um, just look up CIM or Crownsman. You'll find all this information and the more shows coming. Please subscribe and follow. Because this information, you know, David coming on our show and, and exploring this, this now, we're talking about technology. We live in a world now where the technology, the information, people are, like David are willing to come on, share their knowledge and its information. And so please take advantage of it by subscribing and, and watching Mining Now. Thank you again. Thank you, Mimo, for hosting this great event here in Kamloops, which is actually my hometown. So thank you uh, extra for that. And we will see you on the next episode.